Hello friends, today we're going to talk about linear phase as it applies to fur filters and other digital filters. I've got an example set up here on scope fur. So this is a low pass filter with a sampling frequency of 44.1 kilohertz, pass band upper frequency 15 kilohertz, stop band lower frequency of 20 kilohertz, 1 dB of passband ripple and 80 dB of attenuation. So you can see that's already been designed. We had a pass band here that stops at about 15 and a stop band that starts at about 20. This has 23 taps and this is a linear phase fur filter. There's a couple of ways we can know that. We'll look at each of those individually. The first way to know that is the impulse response of a linear phase fur filter is symmetrical about the center. So you can see from this graph of the impulse response that it's symmetrical about the center. Another way to know this is linear phase is we've got an unwrapped phase plot for the filter that we just designed showing the frequency response and the phase. Now this is unwrapped because of the fact that when you get to 360 degrees, or in this case minus 360 degrees, uh, it would be discontinuous and look kind of like a jagged sawtooth thing if you um, didn't unwrap the phase. So this program does that for you automatically, and you can see we've got a nice straight line here. So this is linear phase in the literal sense of it. The phase response is a perfectly straight line. Now let's look at the group delay. So group delay, instead of being in terms of degrees, is in terms of a time unit. And there's a mathematical correlation between the frequency, the phase at that frequency, and the delay associated with that phase. It's a fairly simple uh, relation. In-phase group delay is 0.249 and you know we get the same value at any point because we can see this is a horizontal line. So this brings up an important uh, point about linear phase and group delay which is the common term that you see in the textbooks is linear phase but that's really equivalent to flat group delay. So what we're really interested in is not so much phase itself, but the, the group delay is constant at all frequencies. The practical effect of a constant group delay is that in a time domain waveform, there's no sort of phase distortion, as it's called, that uh, distorts the time characteristics of your signal. So the practical implication of that is if all the frequencies in the signal are delayed by the same number of milliseconds in this case, then uh, the time domain representation of the signal is left intact. Except that we've had the one effect that we really wanted out of this filter, which was we were trying to attenuate frequencies above 20 kilohertz. So why do you care about linear phase or really what you might think of as constant delay? And the answer to that is this has to do with uh, time domain signals where a time domain aspect of, of distortion is undesirable. So to give you an example, almost any digital data signal is sensitive to the to some sort of time domain phase-based distortion. Now, other applications are uh, insensitive to f what you call phase distortion. And an example might be, the audio file would, people would disagree with me on this, but if you phase distort an audio signal, the ear hears primarily in terms of frequency. And so a phase distortion in the time domain may not matter at all. In, in an audio application. 
but in a digital data application, you're typically trying to find the edge of some signal, which is a clock edge at which the uh, data will be detected that's embedded in the signal. And if some sort of edge is distorted, that can throw off a timing detection circuit. So the interest in linear phase here comes from the fact that that's important to us in some applications. It's unimportant in other applications. And fur filters have the desirable capability that one, they can be linear phase, and two, you really don't give up much for that privilege. So kind of by default, you might choose a linear phase fur filter, although there's another case where you might not. And I'm going to show you that right now. So we're going to talk about what's kind of exactly the opposite of the linear phase fur filter, which is the minimum phase filter. Scope fur has the capability of converting a normal linear phase filter that it designs by default uh, into what's called a minimum phase filter. So I'm going to make that conversion now by selecting this menu item, convert to minimum phase. And I want you to watch the graphs below to see how that changes. Now there's something magical that happened here, which is the frequency response is exactly the same as before. But look at the impulse response. We can tell by inspection that this is no longer a minimum phase fur filter because of the fact that the impulse response is not symmetrical around the center. And you'll notice in particular that the sort of the peak of the impulse response is kind of front loaded. So since we went for a minimum phase response here, that's had the effect of front loading our coefficients so that this has minimum delay so when we talk about minimum phase, that's technically correct, but probably a better way to think of it is minimum delay. We're trying to get the minimum delay through the filter. Well, why wouldn't you always want that? And the reason is that um, you give up on this linear phase aspect. So it's the same kind of thing where some applications, you want the minimum delay through the filter, which would mean a minimum phase design, in other applications, you don't care about the delay through the filter, but you want the uh, waveform to be preserved in the time domain as much as possible. You know, again, we can talk about audio versus a data demodulation application. So in audio, maybe you want to have minimum delay. Like, for example, let's say a filtering system where you're feeding back uh, microphone audio to headphones. You don't care about the time delay distortion of, of the whole thing, but you want it to come through as quickly as possible so that the person speaking in the microphone can hear what seems like a live output to them, even though it's actually slightly delayed. Now let's go back to our other two graphs here now that we've converted to the minimum phase design. Our group delay here is kind of all over the place. And you can see that reaches a peak a little bit below our stop band beginning of 20 kilohertz. So it's something like flat here with this wiggle in it. But you notice this is a much smaller value than we had before. And let's look at the effect that has on our phase gr graph. So you can say that this is something like linear phase, it's, it's got a kind of an overall line shape to it up to this end of the pass band at 15 kilohertz. It's actually, to the eye, at least perfectly linear phase in the transition band. So this is kind of a trade-off situation. We've gained something and we've lost something. Our phase is less linear at this point, but our delay here is much smaller. So the points to consider here are, on linear phase, do I need that or not? If it's a kind of a frequency domain application, you 
You don't need that generally. If it's a time domain sort of application, or notably some sort of data demodulation, you probably do need that. Likewise, do I want minimum phase or you could think of it minimum delay? Um, a lot of applications that doesn't matter. You know, a data application, typically it doesn't matter if it comes through a fraction later than it was. Or in other applications, yes, that's really important to you. So you have to choose between these two situations, but probably what you want in most cases, kind of by default, is a linear phase for filters. That concludes our tutorial on linear phase and minimum phase fur filters. Hope you've enjoyed this. You can find lots more DSP tutorial information on our website at dspguru.com. And as always, please give us a like and subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks and bye-bye.